Everybody has heard that investing is one of the best ways to increase your wealth. But where do you even begin? When's the right time? How do you know what to invest in? How do you make sure you don't lose all of your money? I'm going to cover all of that and more in this video. And before you ask, no, I am not a banker. I'm not an accountant. I'm just a normal middle class woman who wanted in on what all the rich white guys were having. And so I taught myself. And if I can do it, I assure you that you can too. Okay, this seems like an appropriate moment to jump in here and underline the fact that I am not qualified to give you financial advice. Anything that you learn from this video, you are strongly advised to go and research yourself because while I have done lots of research, I have skin in the game for a few years now, I'm not a financial advisor. Okay, back to the video. What exactly are you doing when you invest? In short, it's buying a piece of something in the hope that the value will increase and you will make a profit. You could invest in wine, in art, in vintage cars. These are all things that have quite a high barrier to entry, but the stock market generally is pretty accessible, which is why it's the most common way to invest. But that brings up another question. What even is the stock market? When companies want to raise capital or make some extra money for themselves, for their operations, they sell off pieces of the company to investors. That's people like me and potentially like you. These little pieces of the company are known as shares and they get bought and sold aka traded on the stock market which is just like any other market except instead of buying and selling vegetables you're buying and selling pieces of the company you can access the stock market online but we will get to that later because first there are some other questions to think about such as whether now is the right time to invest that scary little disclaimer that always says your investments could go up and down that's there for a reason the stock market is not a get rich quick scheme. And as my dad loves to point out, there is no such thing as a free lunch. Everything has a price when it comes to the stock market. That is not only the price of your transaction and what you pay for the actual share. There is also an emotional price as you watch the stock market go up and go down and go up and with it, the value of your investment. So that's all well and good, but how do you know when it's the right time for you to invest? This boils down to a pretty simple question, actually. How much can you afford to lose? If your answer is nothing, you have no backup plan, no savings, and very little financial wriggle room, the answer is not now. You are better off finding a job that pays you better, building up your savings. The stock market is gonna be there when you are ready. On the other hand, if you have a stable job, you have your savings, and you have some disposable income available to you, maybe now is the right time to investigate investing. So dive in, or you could slow down and take a much closer look at your finances. The things that should definitely slow your roll and grab your attention are things like expensive debt that is accumulating interest because you are only making the minimum payments and any short or medium term plans that are going to require cash such as paying for further education or buying a house. Having credit card debt or short term savings goals shouldn't necessarily stop you from investing, but they are things that you should think about before you dive right in. Because knowing your financial priorities affect if and how much you are actually able to invest in the stock market. Okay, so let's say that you decide that you are ready to invest. What happens now? You need to get yourself educated. This YouTube video is a great start. Well done you, I see you but it's probably not enough. You need to do your own research. Arguably the most important part of investing is understanding the risk. Risk is not inherently bad, but if you don't understand it or how to mitigate it, you're not gonna have much success when it comes to investing. So here are some beginner concepts that really help me out. Cost averaging, which is investing little and often instead of one big lump sum. With this approach, you sometimes buy stocks when they are expensive, sometimes when they are cheaper, and on balance, your investments even out. This is often advised as a good approach because if you invest one big lump sum, A, you have the stress of trying to guess when the stocks are gonna be low, and B, you might get it wrong and end up buying when it's really high and then have no way to balance out that expense. Another really important concept to understand is diversification. This is the idea of putting your eggs in multiple baskets, not just one. 
For example, if all of your shares are in American companies and the American economy crashes, the value of your portfolio is going to drop with it. However, if you have some in American shares and some in Asian shares, for example, the American economy drops, hopefully the Asian market stays as it is or increases. Again, on balance, your portfolio does okay. You can also diversify your investments across industries and types of investments. Which brings me to the next piece of the puzzle, which is what types of investments are there? Choosing the type of investment that is right for you will have a massive impact on your investment strategy. It helps to know what the types of investments are. So here we go. Government bonds. When you buy a government bond, basically what you're doing is lending the government a little bit of money for interest. And when you sell your bond, the government gives you the money back plus that interest that you've earned over time. This is often said to be super stable, however, not super high returns. Next up, the one that everyone's heard of, stocks and shares. This is where you are buying a little slice of a company. In case you're wondering the difference, stocks is just a more general term for shares. Shares is usually used when you're referring to a specific company. So you have Apple shares or General Electric shares. Funds is another type of investment. This is where a whole lot of people put cash into a shared pot and a fund manager selects individual stocks on your behalf and sometimes pieces of other funds as well. And then there are ETFs. These are exchange traded funds. They operate in a similar way to a normal fund, except instead of having a fund manager, who skims their cut off the top of your profits. This is managed by an algorithm. Usually it tracks a specific index. And so when certain stocks within the portfolio, when their value falls below the index's value, the algorithm will automatically sell that stock. Okay, quick side note on indices. An index is a measurement for calculating the value of the stock market. And there are different indexes which measure different parts of the stock market. So you may have heard the S&P 500. This is the US's 500 most profitable businesses. How do they calculate what is a profitable business? The S&P 500 uses their specific index. The FTSE 100 is the UK equivalent of the 100 most successful companies. The FTSE 100 uses a different index to calculate the value of those companies. So if you have a fund that's tracking an index, that is what it's doing. And then we have compounding. This is a concept that most people will learn at school, but when it comes to real life, we somehow magically forget it. When it comes to investing, the idea is that the longer and more consistently you invest, the better your returns will be at the end, as your initial investment has more time to grow. Compounding is the underlying reason that people always say that the best investment strategy is the one that you can stick to. And speaking of strategy, this is the point where all of this information comes together. Now, when people talk about investing strategy, that always freaked me out a little bit. But all it is, is referring to your approach to investing. Do you want to be a super hands on investor buying individual stocks and shares? Or are you happier to have a more hands off approach? That's all well and good, but there's still uh, I don't know. So what questions do you really need to ask yourself to understand a good strategy for your circumstances? How much time do you have on your side? The shorter the time span, the less time you're going to have to recover if the value of your portfolio drops. So if you have only a short amount of time, then you probably want to go with a low risk investment and vice versa. Next, how much money do you have to invest? ETFs or exchange traded funds are the cheapest way to invest and stocks, individual shares are the most expensive way to invest. Another great question is what can your nerves handle? The stock market value goes up and down. If you are going to be freaking out every time it goes down, you want to be mindful of what you invest in. So if you have a lot of cash and you are excited by adrenaline, then go for it, do what you want. But if you are a little bit more conservative and tend to get stressed easily, that is going to have an effect on what you invest in. How confident are you? If you've got know-how and cash, which the know-how part at least seems unlikely if you're watching this video, then you can go ahead and invest in whatever the hell you feel like it. But if you are a total noob to the investment vibe, then you probably want to pick an investment that relies less on your own expertise. These options exist. They tend to be lower return, but lower return is better than zero return. And another question you can ask yourself is how involved do you want to be? Are you excited by the idea? 
idea of constantly researching companies, understanding what their turnover is, what their financials look like. Are you excited by the idea of buying and selling? Or do you want a more set and forget approach that is automated and hands off? Once you have answers to those questions, you can research the types of investments that are going to suit your style of investing. And once that is done, you will be as ready as ever to make your first investment. But how do you do that? So many questions. So at this point in the video, we circle back to the idea of the marketplace. In the 21st century, you can access the stock market online. Usually you will download an app or sign up to get an account on an online platform. And from there, you will need to select a tax efficient trading account like an ISA or an IRA. Then you're going to need to transfer your money from your normal bank account into your trading account. And you're not done yet because you still need to buy the actual shares. On most platforms, this is super easy to do. You can click a few buttons, see what funds are available or shares. You probably will have researched which ones you're interested in and seem appropriate for you beforehand. And then a few more buttons to buy. And from there, you can sit back, pleased in the knowledge that you have taken your first step into investing. Remember that like everything, it's a learning process. I am still on that journey. So whatever you do in the first place does not have to be how your portfolio is set up forever and ever and ever, but you need to start to be able to learn. And I hope that this video has helped you take your first steps towards starting. And with that, it's a wrap. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.